Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Down deeper and down. Number two, do, 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 do. sorry. Number two, all right. Uh, number two is fine. Yeah. Number one is fine. Hello, everybody. That was that was a rude welcoming. We were just doing a um a camera check then, and I was saying that looks fine. We're all good. Welcome to Woodworking Wisdom, everyone. A little bit late. I'm really sorry. We were in, we're a we're a camera down. We've been trying to get this camera working um, for the past 20 minutes, and unfortunately, we we can't. We don't have a backup because we're all being used in other places. So we're going to make do with just this one, which we might just sort of jiggle around a bit with. Um, and we've got a down the the line camera, so I do apologise. Um, now Matt's on cameras and trickery and all that sort of stuff. Now his job is arguably a little bit easier today because we've only got two cameras. Um, and but. I say it's a little bit easier. He's going to hopefully filter through, um, well, not filter, just give me all the um, suggestions for what we're going to do. I have had a few on Facebook, um, so I've got plenty of timber prepped up and we're just going to mess around, really. The whole idea today is just to have a little bit of fun. Um, one of the team came up with the idea of just throwing suggestions at us. Um, you know, I've always said this, that I do enjoy the um, Jeopardy of Live. And we're going to stick to the hour. And if you didn't know, you, and you maybe you read Matt's little message. Um, this is going to be my fish, my last official woodworking wisdom. Um, and after nearly thirty years of working for Exminster Tool, I'm moving on um, to pursue my own thing, and my own classes, my own courses, and my own shop with my lovely wife Vicky, um, selling all the things I turn and teaching um, the things that I've been taught over the last 40 years. So I'll be moving on. My last day is tomorrow. So uh, uh, I'm not sad because the reason that I'm not sad is because I'm still working with Axminster. So uh, going forward, you will see me creep back for Woodworking Wisdoms every now and again. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, doing videos and photos every now and again, maybe doing a little bit of teaching, all that sort of stuff. So for that reason, I don't feel very sad, really. My friends and family are all here, so I keep in touch all of the time. And geographically, I'm less than a half a mile up the road anyway, so I'm back. I'm coming back all of the time. So as much as I'm off the payroll, as it were, um, I'm still going to be working and seeing everybody. So there's no issues. I'll be back from time to time. So saying all of that, have we got any early suggestions, Matt? Because the time is ticking um, and we need to start making if not, I'm going to carry on and make a var uh, a, a goblet because there's been a lot of suggestions about goblets. Uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, there's no questions just yet, but um, if everyone could uh, send some um, ideas in of what Colwyn can turn, that would be great. Okay. Matt, would you just put up one of the pictures? So I gave Matt a couple of pictures earlier. One of the pictures is a goblet that my mentor boss jeffrey manley um won a design competition with at parnham house judged by john make peace and he won this um won the competition this is a, 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 a i've recently taken a photo of this and this is a, an ebony base with a lovely pink ivory wood top and it's an old so a cocktail um, glass i would suppose you'd call it um and he won a design competition with that one back in or oh, way before i started with him at the end of the 70s early 80s um, but I thought, well, let's maybe make something like that. A lot of the people online were asking if I could do long stem goblets or goblet, <laughs> a, a double ended goblet or all sorts of things. I could probably make a double ended goblet. Um, but I thought I'll do that one. That's a bit of fun. So I'm going to have dust extraction going. I've got a lovely bit of cherry here. It's a little bit dusty. But please, as usual, just keep asking me questions. That's the way the whole thing works. If you've never seen the channel before, you ask me questions on the chat function. Matt relays them to us, and uh, and we will ask answer if we can. So we're going to start by roughing down. Just uh, shout at me, Matt, if there's any questions. All right.
So it's a rough, rough down. When I say a rough, rough down, what I need to do is rough down to a near cylinder, not completely round, create a hole point on this side, which we can then hold the um, piece on the lathe with a with the chuck grip. So I'm going to use a little, or create a little tenon. It's going to be for the C jaws. And cleaning every area up. That gives us a nice grip for those C jaws. So now we're going to take the center out and put the chuck on. So that was a little round um, uh, pro drive, I guess you call that one. C jaws. And we're using the little SK100 chuck. One of my favorites, this one actually. It's just that little bit smaller, so it's good. It fits in the hand nicely. Fits on most sizes of lathe as well. So there we are. So with a goblet, and I was speaking to somebody in the week actually who had who made their first goblet. Turn the extractor off for five minutes. Who who was making their first goblet and they hollowed it. They they done the outside, then went to hollow it out, and it snapped off. And of course, if you do that first, um, you've weakened the piece. So we want to take as much of the inside out first before we start thinking about the out, external design. But you can only do a little bit of it because otherwise we won't, you know, we, it's easier to see an outside form than it is the in. Uh, yes, Matt, I've got a question. Uh, so we've got a um, turning idea from Maria. It's um, Colwing, I am challenging you to turn a pair of perfect eggs, no flat bottoms, matching in size. <laughs> that Well, that's really apt. Would you pop that other, other um, uh, picture up, please, Matt? Yeah, sure. So... Talking about Jeff, my mentor, friend, um, teacher, boss, everything. Um, my my job for him, for him was, he was production turning. So I started with him as a, um, a on work experience. I've done a three week placement on work experience. Then he asked me back to be an apprentice, and one of the apprentice pieces he asked me to do was turn two egg boxes, um, one that fitted inside the other. Um, and with the grain joining up he presented me with these about five or six years ago i think it was and um i was really quite chuffed with the fact that all those years ago i managed to do those two eggs and they do fit perfectly inside each other wall thickness is about two millimeters and it was in um, um african mahogany at the time and i was quite chuffed with this the um the shape firstly and the fact that i've got them the, th uh, the same thickness all the way around and they fitted inside each other so that there we are that was an apprentice piece um not trying to big myself up but just um it was perfect timing uh, maria well done um, but yeah let's do that let me do this far uh, this um goblet foil and we'll do a couple of eggs because eggs are notoriously difficult we'll talk more about that in a minute so let's get some of that inside gone so just going to clean up this first surface. So we're doing like the little cocktail glass. So I'm going to do some of the inside. Oh, it's all I slipped. Do some of the inside. Don't have to worry about an overhead camera now, so I can put my light wherever I want to. Good thing about the the goblet I'm trying to make here is the shape is actually fairly simple. There we are. Some, oh, that's not a good finish. I was going to say some of the inside done. depth finder yeah so with a depth finder we can just work out exactly what the that inner depth is so just cleaning up the outside surface then i'll use the little depth gauge just to pop in there tighten up so that's where the internal ends there so let's give ourselves a little bit more in fact i'm gonna gonna come away a lot more do the partial cut
There we are. So I've got about 30 mil there. We'll take away some waste. And then start that external shape. At this point, I've still got plenty of chances to change it if I need to. I've given myself plenty of thickness. There we are. Now, now I've still got a little bit of strength left. So what I'm going to do, I like that external shape. I think I'm, I'm pretty much there with that one. So let's take a little bit from the inside. And um, today, everybody, I'm not going to be doing any sanding um, just because I want to try and get through as much technique as possible. There we are, nice and thin. So now we'll finish the var the I keep saying vase. Finish the goblet off. Are we all right, Matt? Um, got a question uh, or a suggestion from a gentleman Wood Turner. Off center egg cup. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Keep that on this style of little um, goblet. The base is quite big. The stem is going to be quite small. Jeff was quite a fan of that Art Deco sort of design. Hence his form yeah And we want to be quite thin with this stem, so I'm not going to leave any thickness here at all. Just going to bring that tail stop back into play. Just want to support it. As you get thinner and thinner, it will want to whip a little bit. I'm looking up on the shelf just to see if I've got any more of those. No, I haven't. Offset um, egg cuts. They are a thing, but they take an awful long time, Mark. Um, maybe if everybody's watching and anybody out there that watches Mark's the gentleman would turn his live streams I think it's on it's on a Monday or is he might have changed I'm not quite sure but Mark maybe that's a suggestion for one of your next lives because I won't have time tonight maybe you could prep up and do that on one of your next ones I'd like to see an offset uh, an offset egg cut would be great I don't think I've seen you do one before
There we are. Just using the gouge both as a, a roughing gouge, a bowl gouge, and a little skew. Um, nice, sharp, angular profile. Right, little parting tool next. So not to part off with the um, the vase held between two centers, otherwise it'll buckle up and things go wrong if we do that. So what I'm going to do is just use my left hand as the tailstock and then finish, finish that parting off. Look. Move that out of your way. First little little project done. Okay, there we are. So that's that. Trying to follow that nice little um, design idea by um, Jeff Manley, all in one piece. However, um, his was his was a couple of different timbers. But there, that's that. Hopefully, that might give you an idea. Those that suggested a goblet um, or a thin stem goblet, that's relatively thin. Um, but yeah, nice little. Art deco, style, art deco style. Right, so what do we say? Eggs. Now, what if I got egg size? Let's go for, I'll tell you what, very quickly. Let's go a couple of bits of that. A couple of bits of that. Matt's going to um, just temporarily sing a song whilst I'm um, cutting this bit of timber. Um, all I'm going to do, I want to cut, I'll cut and rough down. This is two bits of softwood. So two bits of softwood. I want a, a nice little ring center um, as a drive. And if I can find one, a nice little ring center as a tailstock, uh, tailstock center. I wish I could bring you around the workshop with me, unfortunately. Um, I can't see any of those drives. Um, but there, back in the room here. With, hello, everybody. So two bits of softwood just to get that that form. Now, I said it to you earlier that eggs are one of those awkward little shapes. They're a little bit like, they're a little bit like um, fruit to term because if an apple or a pear, if they don't look like an apple or a pear, they're nothing. Same with an egg. You can make a vase, whatever shape you want a vase to be, and you call it a vase is a vase. But if an egg doesn't look like an egg, doesn't work so we've got to make it right and i've seen all sorts of shapes for eggs in fact i was guilty of making a few bullets and a few missiles um myself um so we've got to be <coughs> a little bit careful um we'll use a little jam chuck if i've got one yeah i've got one over there if not we can always make one so turn between centers first drive center we'll use a small friction drive accurately work out the center any questions matt while i'm burbling i uh, just got a few suggestions um how about a lidded bowl um let's see colwing hol hollowing with a skew uh please <laughs> Will Axminster still have the infamous Colwyn Way skew chisels? Of course, absolutely. Um, and then, how do you clean up and sand inside of a hollow vase? Clean up and sand the hollow vase. Well, you can get um, uh, sanding extensions. I've got one, uh, one of my own actually, by Manpa. Um, and uh, they're really, really good. You put the um, 50 mil, 75 mil pads on the end of those and sand in. I've seen all sorts. In fact, I've used myself 
um, uh, Dow with a, a squash ball on the end, cover that in Velcro, and then put your sand, your abrasive on the end. You can do that. Um, one good by a professional friend of mine. Um, he says it's easy. You paint the inside black, and no one can see the finish. Um, but in seriousness, you can get really quite nice effects on the inside when drawing up a gouge or drawing up a scraper. You get those lovely circular patterns coming up through the inside. And if you do paint that black, it's almost um, takes on a pottery sort of feel to it. Um, and it depends on the size of the hole, of course. If you've got a tiny little opening in the top, it's intended to be the outside form you're looking at. You're not intended to, to have a really smooth interior. If you're looking at the in interior because it's an open form, that's different. You can get to it. Um, there's all sorts of tricks to do that. You can come in from the back side to have a, have a large open on the underside and, and plug fit. Um, there's lots of things you can do to cover that that inside. I'm just gonna have a. I'm just gonna sieve my coffee through my teeth a minute because it's full of shavings. Do you want to repurpose that camera? Yeah, people are asking. Get in. Well, they don't need to see my face. They've been seeing it for the past four years. Let's, um, we'll keep this one there and then just bring that one in nice and close. I'm going to carry on turning whilst Matt's doing that. This was, with these woodworking wizards, it's quite apt because this is where we started. We started in my own workshop at, at home during lockdown and we were with a we were streaming with Wi-Fi and a mobile phone. So here we are. We're having to improvise again. There we are. There's an extra £10 on that piece because we've got a lovely knot, a lovely feature. That's not the same on any other, on any other egg that I'm going to make today. So let's just give that a nice skew cut to clean the top surface. Sort of reluctant to just break that one off because if we break it off, what will happen there? You see, probably break off um, grain up through. So I'm just gonna weaken it with the saw, and then we'll pop that in a jam chuck in a minute, and we'll do the rest of the egg. So we've got a fairly clean finish there because we used the skew chisel to finish it. We do number two. Similar size. I think the brief was to do same size, wasn't it? <laughs> there we are. Rough down first. Right, 
Right, let's get some calipers on that old one. There we are. Now, rather than to, um, measure the high spot, what I'm going to do is measure away from it and then just skew cut the top. Otherwise, what you're in, in uh, likelihood of doing is marking this high spot here um, because the parting tool is never going to give you as clean a finish as the skew. So if I come away from what is going to be the high spot, there we are. That's the diameter I need to work to. Just creep in a little bit and then we can plane with the with the skew to get the right diameter. So now the diameter is right. Okay, we've got that, happy with that. Next thing is the the overall length of the egg. And you if you're making these to sell, then you, the first thing you will do is just cut all your blanks to the right size, to the same size. So that's the that's the size of the egg. Let's take some of the waste away. And at this point, that surface there doesn't need to be clean at all because that's not going to be anywhere near the finished surface of the egg. Same here. So I can do quite a coarse rough cut before we then start the shape. And then you can go back to your skew and do the cleaning up cuts. That's better. Let's have a quick check, see if we're reasonably similar. Yeah, a little bit softer on this back edge, that's all we need to be. So let's bring him over one more time. And done. So let's take a little bit more away. Just be brave here. Take away as much as you can. Watch the dust extraction if the dust extraction is on. Watch your hand, of course. There we are. So we just need to clean those up now. So let me just get rid of some of these tools. Any more suggestions whilst I'm doing this, Matt? Uh, just some 
uh, say, people say you're a good egg. <laughs> um, I don't get any better. Next, I need. I need to make a jam chuck. The jam chucks we have are the wrong size. This is just like making a piece of fruit. If I use, there we are. I reckon that'll be that'll be just jam chuck size. I reckon. We'll try this one. So um, let's go with external grip on this chuck. Now this is just because I would cut a piece of timber the right size and hold it and do all of that sort of thing. But just so we don't waste too much time here, if these jaws will hold, we're gonna part a little bit off of this. And that's a negative. So back with centers. All we do is make another grip. Nice to be the zero, turn the lathe on. rid of that now we're going to part this off this is too long at the moment for for what i need so if we part a little bit off and once i made this jam chuck this jam chuck could be, be with us forever you don't need to they won't break they don't really wear so frederick is asking will you be doing lives from your new school Yes, I will. Don't worry, they will not be anywhere near this live at all. So that's one thing else that I wanted to say that woodworking wisdom, as we know, isn't going to stop. I'm we're still going to be coming back. I want to be doing parts of it. Is Jason still going to be doing woodworking wisdoms? We've got lots of guest turners and woodworkers coming in as well. So there's plenty more content coming. little bit of hollowing out look how coarse and rough that is that's the part from that's from the passing tool just not as good a finish as others so let's go in now with we'll go a little quarter inch bowl gouge hollow this out first You just need to make enough room for that little leg to seat in there. There we go. We might be nearly there for this one. 
if I was doing this and wanting to keep one and using it time and time again for different projects, then I'd go all the way through, follow all the way through so you can knock out with a knocking knockout bar. Um, but this is just for the day. Well, I've gone a bit too big. That's all right. Well, it's not all right, but I can get over it. We can always take more wood away. Now let's just try that diameter before I go and take any more away and lose. I have to go back to start. That's pretty good. I'll reverse in there. But all I need to do now is improve the chamfer. So the chamfer's there. It's just not fine enough to grip properly. think hopefully that should be all right and we can finish those two pieces off back in the day when um when i was learning to turn and under uh, uh jeffrey eggs were used to be the the um, product that we made for collectors of timbers now of course a lot of people collect timber in the form of wooden fruit similar sort of thing in terms of difficulty of getting that perfect form but still pleasing um, to make. So spindle gouge. Now, don't use a bowl gouge. You'll rake the grain away a little bit too much. So get yourself a nice uh, spindle gouge. Let's get rid of that in a minute. And, and jam chucking is, is a solution, a work holding solution for many projects. There we are. Then you, of course, you'd sand that. Oh. Another reason you'd have a hole through the middle is because you need to remove them from the jam chuck afterwards. sand up one thing i have found when you're sanding end grain like this is just a little bit of care especially on softwoods um you'll end up splitting the grain if you get them too hot all right that's one egg do the next one i've got a lot of gripping here so i'm not going to hold that in there too tight uh, i've got a question from ken did you have a favorite project whilst i've been doing these um there are many really you know my love for german turning so german smokers that sort of thing, they were really quite fun um all the nutcrackers the christmas paraphernalia the christmas ones really for me are just just my best time of year if i'm honest there we are other side um in terms of fun then i suppose um maria was responsible for weeble wobbles um <laughs> whether it was my favorite it's probably one of my least favorite but it caused a huge amount of conversation and lots of giggles but all of them when we choose something especially if it's a a viewer's suggestion that then if we obviously never made these things before we go away and research them and, and we get a chance then to look at youtube and and other makers other turners that have been doing um these things so we get a chance to learn um quite a lot a little bit of mess on there let's just go back and clean that off so we get a chance to learn so it's really a bit great learning experience um trying to come up with a different project all the time there we go that'll do um and what i found also it, it's created a lovely community that even when i'm 
yabbering on or not yabbering on um the chit chat that goes on behind the scenes i'm i'm as much invested in as as anything let's get that not out of the way there we are that that's a, a similar oh, similar pair of eggs i think um but do yourself a favor when you're making these if you're making them to sell um just cut away but your blanks at the same size you'll be surprised how quickly they they all look similar especially in a in a basket all together different sizes different different colors that sort of thing how are we doing any more suggestions before i just pick something someone suggested a three-sided bowl which i was always quite um dismissive of i've seen a very very good friend of mine doing a great demos of a three-sided bowl jimmy clues um he's done if you don't if you haven't seen his demo i'm not quite sure what he called it maybe try three-sided bowl but put jimmy close to three-sided bowl um he, he really really good explanation of of how to make one i'm just gonna do a very quick one mike walt was another guy i've seen do this really good explanation of of how to make one i do need a specific center for this one as well a little ring center which i'm gonna just search for there we go. Look hard enough, Colwyn. You'll find one right next to you. Three-sided bowl. We're going to do a miniature three-sided bowl because I haven't got a big lump of wood to do a big one. Uh, Jim B is saying, uh, could you tell us um, again why you are using a spindle gouge for the trim up of the eggs? The, the, yeah, because the spindle gouge, I get them both by the camera a minute. Uh, bowl gouge there, spin the gouge there. So we've got deep fluted bowl gouge and a very shallow but wide fluted spindle gouge. The difference between the two, when I turn them over, you can see that one has a very, uh, one's a very cute angle like the uh, spindle gouge. So it's more knife like than the 55 degree curve angle of the bowl. So the bowl on end grain can sometimes rake the grain out where this will slice it really quite neatly, almost like a skew chisel. Um, so that's it. It's a halfway, the spindle is a halfway house between your bowl gouge and your skew, without the added potential of running up the side of a bead, of course, like a skew can do sometimes. But it just is a much, much better finish. Uh, let's go. So we need a good drive. And I'm going to... Just on my baseboard a minute, just cut a flat so I can drive a piece of timber with my nice little trim saw. Uh, Ken has also asked, do you have a favourite wood turner? I've got lots of friends that are wood turners, and I'm not going to alienate myself by suggesting one. However, I've done a lot of traveling, and almost like a family member of mine is Nick Agar. I think you all know that. Um, so I'm going to... Nick's more of a brother than a friend, I think, really. Um, I, I hope he'll agree when I say that. We spent a lot of time together. And so he is my, I suppose, favorite. If you're in terms of um, what they make, I really am a fan of what he does as well. His design eye is, is second to none. Um, but I, there are others. Pascal Ulde um, is a favorite of mine. Jan Moreau is another favorite of mine. That sort of style of, of our, um, sort of sculptural turning, I really like watching. Um, so, yeah, those two guys really, for me, are, are, are right at the top. Um, Eleanor Lakeland, I went to see her the other day. She does some incredible work, very large sculptural pieces, 50% turning, 50% sculpture. Um, yeah, so those sorts of turning, really. Have a look online. I got a suggestion from Nikki. Can you turn across? Oh, there's a thing. Never done one. Not this sort of scale, anyway. I 
I'd, tr- I'd always try. I'd have to figure that one out, though. I'd have to think about that one. Let's go for a bigger gouge, something a little bit more clout. Gonna make a, a little sacrificial foot so, um, foot so I can hollow this in a minute. And that sacrificial foot's gonna be held in the O'Donnell jaws. solid tim let's just see where we are at the moment so one two three take off that waste in a moment but uh, there we are get that out of our way now let's form that little foot for the O'Donnells and take away the waist. So the foot's going to be right in there. So I want a little dovetail. The inside of the ODs are, are, are slightly dovetailed, so... Be where we grip. Here we are. Let's just going to cut that bit of waste away. I'd always put a sacrificial foot on this one anyway, so the foot wants to come off right at the end. the O'Donnell jaws on and we'll hollow that one out and I reckon then we'll probably be there so ODs O'Donnell's what will be our three-sided bowl. Grains all over the place on this one, so don't expect this to be straightforward we've got end grain side grain everything
this point, it's almost like a natural edge bowl. Just make sure your fingers are clear from the edges. Make sure you turn the tool uh, the lathe off when you want to move the tool rest. have our three-sided little bowl. Next job on there would be to reverse onto a little wooden dome. Um, a sacrificial piece of timber in the lathe. That can go over there, tail stop comes up, and then you can clean away your sacrificial base. Or you might choose to leave a base on there. That's entirely up to you, of course. But there we are. That's our three-sided three -sided bowl. So, Matt, would you pop that camera back a minute and we'll sign off and ask questions and all those sorts of things for the for my last official time we are so we've made well we've made four things not too bad one is a matching pair of eggs the three-sided bowl and the goblet so a lot of those have come from um, facebook that i've been watching over the week thank you mark for getting suggestions out there and sharing the post gentleman wood turner um and thank you everybody for putting those suggestions in certainly for me thank you for creating this community that we have done over the past four years i think it is now um, like I said, it's not the last time, unfortunately, you're going to see me. I'm going to be popping up all over the place, um, including Woodworking Wisdom again. So um, no no issues, nothing like that. So we're going to be working together. Um, like I said, lots of content coming from Woodworking Wisdom. So keep watching. Don't forget, hit the notifications button so you can see whenever anything is coming up um, on the channel. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, of course. And if you're in the Axminster area, as well as coming to Axminster, come and say hello um uh, to to myself in in the uh, in the new shop as well um until uh, i see you next time thank you for stopping by um enjoy the projects and see you again bye bye